Hey guys. <laughs> It's been just about a year since I put together my Ikea cabinet terrarium and I haven't really given any updates on it. So today I thought I would give you some Ikea cabinet updates. It's also my kind of care routine of this thing. I'm gonna introduce you to my buggies, how I feed them, different little care things for them. And it was a lot of work to put this together, but truly it's like super low maintenance i don't have to do much for it and it brings a lot of joy and like satisfaction into my life day to day i spend a lot of time sitting in front of this thing you know watching my plants grow but honestly it mostly has become something that i appreciate for the bug world that i have going on in here so yeah, I'm really excited to get into it. If you have any questions that I don't touch on in the video, then feel free to leave a comment. I will answer all the questions. I will have timestamps down below if you want to skip around to the different sections of this video. First off, I will give you like a little tour of all of the plants I have in here. I don't remember if I actually showed you every single plant I had in here when I built the terrarium. I think I kind of just briefly went over a few. Starting up here, which is my problem area and an issue I've really, really had with this this terrarium in particular where it is so narrow and this light kind of perfectly fits up here. Don't get me wrong, I love the light. It's powerful enough to allow the plants to photosynthesize. It is a little bit too strong for what is positioned up here. I have kind of been toying with the idea of changing this section up because it is a little bit of an eyesore because the sphagnum moss uh, just dries out way too fast. And even though I do spray this down every day, it never stays hydrated. So as a result, all of the plants I've tried up here have had a really hard time growing. Um, what I have at the moment are over here, I have a little bit of variegated, outer variegated Hoya Bella, just a couple little pieces I've been propagating in here. So I do think Hoya will do a lot better up here. Maybe I need to add a few like larger Hoyas in. If you have an idea of something that could kind of solve this problem, maybe I need to get a mister. Probably a mister is my best bet to make this a little bit more plant inhabitable. <laughs> Here we have a Selaginella, which is kind of being hidden by this begonia. It gets really vibrant and rainbowy. Here is a Labisia that I actually just stuck a leaf right here, which you can see, and it has now grown. Here we have a Raphidophora cryptantha, which has kind of found its way all over the place a little bit. It's ended up clear over here now. There's not a whole lot of leaf going on. It's mostly stem, but I do think that comes back to you guessed it, the water, the dryness issue. <laughs> then here we have some Peperomia Hoffmannii, which this is definitely getting too strong of light. It is still growing and I do kind of like how it's cascading off the edge of this cliff I built in. I do think that looks pretty cool. Um, there's a little clover growing right there, which is a weed, but I love it. <laughs> I think it's really cute, so I'm gonna leave it. Next to that back here, we have a Hoya croniana black. Here we have a variegated Raphidophora hayi, which this one did kind of lose its variegation for a bit, but it looks like on this leaf, it's coming back pretty strongly. So that's pretty cool. I'm happy about that one. That actually is the one that's doing the best, I would say. It's grown so much because um, when I threw it in here, it started, oh wow, it started clear the hell down here. Didn't have any leaves for a long, long time. And then suddenly up here, it must need a lot of light or something um, because now that it's pretty close to the light, it has put out pretty big, variegated, beautiful leaves. So that one is definitely a success as far as this cabinet goes. Moving down to this section, this is actually Ryan's Begonia. I will put the name on screen because I can't remember it off the top of my head right now, but it's growing, doing, decent, so I'm happy about it. Here we have a variegated homolomina. This is the newest leaf it put out, and the variegation is getting a little bit more stark, which is exciting. Back here, I have Syngonium Red Spot Tricolor, just a little tiny prop. Underneath the Selaginella is a Begonia Julau, you know, the really beautiful pink one hiding back here. This guy kind of in the way, not looking too, you know what, actually, I think I'm just gonna like break it here. Mm. pot it back in maybe just stick it in there and it'll grow that's the cool thing about begonia they just root so easily so yeah we'll see what happens with that but now it's out of the way maybe some things can grow a little bit better back here anyway that is a begonia negro census it's like really beautiful and pink mine has gotten a little more mature so the more mature these ones get the less pink they have which 
is a little bit sad. And then in the back there, tucked behind this is a blue oil fern, which I just kind of plucked a leaf off of my main plant that's down in my grow tent, threw it in here, and it is starting to grow. Again, another kind of recent additions. I can't remember what begonia this is, but it's either Melanobolata or Nahungensis. I can't remember which one's which because they do look really similar when they are immature. I'll show you the other one, which is one or the other in a minute. But here we have a Libicia, an, or an Ardicia turtleback. It was just a stem I thought I thought had died and I was like, I'll just throw it in there and see what happens. And I'm really glad I decided to do that because it is now growing back. It did take a very long time, but it's growing back. So that's very cool. And here is a variegated holiday cactus. So at some point I'm actually going to take this one out. I just kind of stuck it in here to see if this would be a good environment to get it like growing in. Um, but I will eventually move that one out. Here we have a philodendron white princess. This is a mint variegated adansonii, which I know these get kind of, a this is a little bit off topic, but I know these get kind of a bad rap, but look at how beautiful this one is. Like it's so beautiful and, modeled and I don't know the color the the color variation in these is really pretty and I think the holy like this one looks like a little face oh my gosh it's a little like ghost that's so cute this is an alocasia dragon scale um, and next to it we have a philodendron sodoroy which has grown all the way up here uh, this is a fern, which I will have to put the name on screen, but it's doing okay and it does look like there's a new leaf at the bottom. So maybe it just needed a little bit of a like acclimation period. Um, hopefully it got it, but the, yeah, like I said, there is a new leaf down at the bottom, which is a good sign in my opinion. Uh, this is a philodendron bipenifolium. Here we have a begonia pavonina, which I just kind of stuck a leaf to the side here and hoped it would propagate, and it actually has. You can see the tiny little baby plant there. This plant looks so different when it's immature compared to its mature, more mature leaves. Obviously, this one is still pretty immature, but this is the one that has like a very blue oil spill looking iridescence in direct light. Some kind of monstera, Leclariana maybe. I don't know. These are both a kind of monstera though. Couldn't tell you what they are because they are still in an immature form. So once it starts getting the fenestrations, I'll, it'll be a little bit easier to tell what it is. I think they're Leclariana though. Uh, here we have a, oh my gosh, I'll have to put it on screen because I just cannot remember for the life of me, but I think it's really, really pretty. Moving you downward on the same wall a little bit, we have another of that same Monstera that's up there that I have no idea what it is. Philodendron varicosum, which I actually think I need to pin into place a little bit more because it is kind of hanging over a lot of the plants down here. Actually, I'll just prop it up behind that little begonia. Yeah, that's better. Okay, yeah, so we have philodendron varicosum right here. This here we have ficus villosa, which is kind of growing up. I think it'll be really cool if it like finds its way all the way up there. This is the point probably two thirds of the way up where the plants really start being a lot healthier and happier, clearly. Here we have a begonia amphioxus. This is also Ryan's plant. It's getting pretty big. So I don't know, we'll see what happens when it gets a little bit bigger because I may have to like cut it put it back in how I did the Negro census, but really pretty. It might get a little bit top heavy, which is what I'm worried about. But anyway, this is a Syngonium Albo, which kind of has something weird going on with it. So here's their original leaf. It's like a regular Albo, but now it's doing this green on green thing. Like the leaves are coming in really light colored with some dark green variegation. So I'm not really sure why, but that's pretty cool. Epipremnum amplissimum, which this is a variegated one, but all of the new leaves have come out reverted. So I'm gonna let it grow in more and see if that'll come back at all. But I don't know, it's kind of looking like it's just going to revert. So I'm not gonna mess with it too much. We'll see what happens. At some point, maybe I'll chop it up and try to get the variegation to come back, but I don't know. Uh, here is a philodendron Graz, graziel, I think is what it's called. My mom gave this to me because it wasn't really doing well in regular household humidity. Um, you can see the leaves are all crinkly from before when it lived in household humidity. And then since it's been in here, they come out a lot more smooth because of the high humidity. Okay, I keep going on about it anyway. Back here we have a Syngonium wendlandii. This is a watermelon peperomia, which for some reason doesn't look very watermelony, but it's at least not dying and the leaves aren't ripped how they usually are for me. So I take that as a win. Here is that begonia I told you about. That's either the melanobolata or the, let's try and move this leaf out of the way, 
or the Nahungensis, still pretty immature, so again, it's hard to tell. This is a Philodendron Campospor toanum and a Syngonium strawberry ice, as well as this top of my Mark Gravia Sintonesii, which has grown probably the most out of any plant in here. I'll show you the full plant in a minute. Here we have a stretched, maybe etiolated, kind of weirdly growing Syngonium Green Splash, which I really like this variety, but for some reason this one is just growing so weird. So I don't know if maybe I need to move it a little bit higher up. There's not really a good place for it higher up though. So I don't know, I'm just hoping that it'll start to look full and less stretched. <laughs> um, and here we have a type of, oh my gosh, why can't I remember what that is? It's gonna drive me nuts that I forgot so many names of this. I'm so sorry, but I will have them all on screen. But anyway, I really, really like this plant. It's kind of a newer addition to my plant collection and I've really enjoyed it. Here is a Syngonium Panda, which I believe has reverted. Um, this is a Begonia Cleopatra, which is actually one of my favorite Begonia varieties. Another one that I just kind of stuck a leaf in there being like, okay, if it grows great, if not great, and it has grown kind of weirdly, but it's fine. Here is a little bit more of the Salaginella. I just stuck a few pieces there to kind of hopefully fill it in. Maybe I should add a little more right here. I think that would look really nice. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I think that would look really good. Kind of skipped past this one. This is another one I can't remember the name of, but it is a type of Piper. It has some hot pink veinage on it that I really like, and the leaf shape is really like plump and wide, and I love that. I love that those kinds of leaves. So back to that Mark Gravia. Here is where it started, just in like a clump of moss on this piece of wood, and it's grown quite a bit. And you can see these leaves up top are quite a bit bigger than these ones down here. So I'd say it's doing really well for itself in here. Um, and next to it, we have a Piper Sylvatica, just like a little prop I stuck in that's now starting to grow a lot more. This is a Philodendron Fibrosum, which might've been really dumb for me to put in here because this plant does get really big. So I do foresee it being a little bit of an issue as it starts to mature and get those really huge leaves. Here is a Syngonium Steyr Markii, which is definitely a success story because this is a plant I really, really, really struggle with, but it's grown in here, which I'm really happy with. It was just like a tiny little node I stuck in and it has put out its second leaf with a third on the way, which is very exciting to me. Here we have a Philodendron Melanochrysum. Uh, this is a Philodendron Glorious, which I've kind of pinned back here. I've pinned back behind this uh, Begonia Darth Vidariana because it was rubbing up against all of these leaves here and melting them. So that's why this doesn't have very many leaves going on. Hopefully that'll solve the issue and these newer leaves that's starting to put out will stay like big and not melt like this one. Next to that, we have a Monstera Oblica species Peru, just a little guy, and a Philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy here, which I don't know, it's grown pretty slow, but these two new leaves it just put out are looking really nice. So I think we are in the clear and I really want this one to like grow up all the way to kind of fill in this side of the terrarium because I will say this section here is pretty ugly <laughs> looking and bare and just, I don't know, it's just moss. I, I definitely want a bit more plant life on this side. Yeah, then down at the very bottom, we have a, Begonia maculata widei, which was a leaf I took off my grandma's plant I inherited. I just threw it in here in case anything went south with my mother plant that is like her actual plant. Then I would at least have like a little piece of it still. So yeah, that was just kind of a backup plan, but I am probably gonna leave it because I do like how it kind of fills in down here a little bit more. And then this is an Anthurium waraquianum leaf skeleton. I previously had this planted at the top of this wood piece, if you remember, if you watched the original video, but it was getting a little bit too big that the leaves were really shading down here. So everything down here was just not getting enough light at all. So once I moved that out, things definitely started to pick up growth wise 
in this area. So that was the right move, but I did leave that large leaf in here. I knew it was gonna die anyway if I moved it out of here where this is such high humidity. So um, I ended up leaving the leaf here and the bugs have actually eaten. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more later when we talk more about the bugs, but they've eaten the like tissue between all of the veins of the leaf. That's been a really, really cool process to watch. Maybe I'll add, I wanna add another leaf in here like this for them to eat. I really love that and the bugs love to crawl around on it. They're probably still kind of gnawing on it. I don't know, I just think it's kind of pretty. <laughs> this is my Syndapsis Silver Lady, which this Syndapsis variety is really difficult for me in regular household humidity, temperature, whatever, but in here it has grown a lot. So it was maybe like three leaves when I threw it in the bottom here and just crossed my fingers to hope for the best, but it's grown, it has grown. And I am very, very pleased with it. And especially as it like grows in maybe toward the back there to look really excellent. And right here, kind of growing all the way up here is a Syndapsis Satin Blue, I believe it is. It's a pretty one and it, it is kind of like, you can see this gnarly little runner. It's, well, not little, it's actually a really long runner that it has thrown out, um, which is pretty weird looking. But then up here, it finally decided to put out two new leaves. So maybe it just needed a little bit more light. I don't know, we'll see. I'm I'm fine to leave it here and let it do its own thing, see how it figures itself out and grows in. If I see it like dying off or stop pushing out the leaves up here, then maybe I'll consider moving it. But for right now, I'm happy with how it is. And it's the perfect little frame for me to be able to watch my bugs eat their calcium supplement, which we will get into at the end of the video. I did already film all of that, which is why there's food all over the place, but um, I didn't wanna put it at the beginning of the video for any of the like can't stomach looking at bugs. But yeah, that is my terrarium tour. What do you think? I do really love it a lot. It's one of my favorite planty things in my home and I get a lot of enjoyment out of this, like the plants and also the bugs. And then, I don't know, it's just so beautiful. It's like a freaking art piece or something to me. I love this piece of wood. It just, it's everything I wanted my cabinet to be. Well, almost. Once we get those top issues figured out, it'll be everything I wanted it to be. In the comments of that original video, some people were like, oh, you're gonna get mold, but I actually haven't because of the bugs I've introduced into here. So I do have earthworms, snails, dairy cow isopods, springtails, and millipedes. Um, I think they're called like flathead millipedes. Most of those do actually eat mold and stuff like that, decaying matter. So it hasn't become an issue because of the buggies I keep in here, which now we're gonna get into the bug section. So if you're somebody that can't stomach looking at bugs, then the next section is definitely not going to be for you. Um, so if that's the case, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye. But if it is the case, then, you know, we still have a little section. We still have some things to talk about and some things for me to show you. So <laughs> okay, let's get into the bugs. <laughs> I know bugs aren't everybody's cup of tea, but me personally, I really, really love them. In fact, like growing up, I wanted to be an entomologist because I really do love bugs and I always have. I, I just really like watching them. I think they're so cool and fun and interesting. Like it's a little another side hobby. I have too many hobbies, but... Everything's just so interesting in the world. An issue I've had with them is actually my snails. They somehow, it's only the snails. They find their way over top of this glass front. They fall between the door and this glass. Every single night, I actually really enjoy just spending, you know, 10 minutes sitting here watching my bugs <laughs> come out and eat and whatever else they do, procreate rapidly. <laughs> Um, but that's what they do and, and they are they are more active in the evening So I already kind of spend time here anyway I just have to make sure that I open up the doors and pluck all the little snails that have fallen down Throw them back into here because it makes me sad to see that they're like drying out I move them back here and you know what is kind of messed up I say that I haven't really had this issue with a lot of bugs But here I actually have a millipede a little millipede baby Okay, I'm trying to rescue you dude that has found its way outside of the glass barrier. <laughs> Come on, oh, I got it, oh, I got it. Okay, there it is. Yeah, just a little one. I do have um, weather stripping, so I haven't had any issues. I haven't seen any bugs get 
find their way outside of this. I have filled in any holes and cracks and crevices that there are so that nothing can escape. So I'm not worried about that at all, but I am worried about them falling there. Um, for some reason, they can't find their way back up and then they have died. Ibis, are you jealous that I'm paying attention to this millipede instead of you? <laughs> Here you go, little buddy. I do have springtails, millipedes, earthworms, snails, and dairy cow isopods in here. Um, in the original video, I did add the dairy cow and zebra isopods, but the dairy cows have overpowered. Somehow the zebra ones ended up disappearing pretty quickly. Maybe one day I'll be able to add another kind of bug in here. I have thought about adding a praying mantis into here, but it does stay a little bit too humid for most mantises. So I don't know if that's something I'll actually end up doing, although that would be super cool, super ideal for me. So we'll see what we could figure out in the future. Maybe I could add a fan for a little bit of extra airflow. Although, like I said, I do open the doors every day. So there is airflow. It's just a little bit muggy at times and that could be that could introduce sicknesses to the praying mantises But a lot of people have suggested that and I do think it'd be really cool I'd like to figure something out for that. So maybe this is the year. I'm gonna figure out a praying mantis Situation <laughs> overall, I really do love my dairy cows the most because they're just so active and I'm not saying they have like personalities, individual little personalities, maybe they do, but they do definitely have personality. They're a little bit, uh, I can't see any right now because they are more active in the evening when it's nighttime and they move very quick. So during the day, even if they're out and about, they can be out of sight like that. Um, I do really like how big they get. I was actually pretty surprised by how big they get. Another issue I've kind of had is everything is breeding so rapidly. I think this is just such an ideal environment for them, especially the millipedes and the, you know what, actually the millipedes, snails, and isopods have bred really rapidly and they're it was kind of getting out of hand a little bit. I think I was feeding them too often, so I have cut back on that. The numbers haven't increased as rapidly. So I now only feed them once a week with a few little snacks every few days, uh, and that seems to do the trick. That seems to be just the right amount for what I have going on and how I would like the population to grow or stay fairly steady. They do mostly hang out down here, but every once in a while I do find a cluster up there, which is kind of fun. It really brings this whole terrarium to life in my opinion. And not only that, in my original video, a lot of people expressed worry that I was going to have like mold. I haven't had any issues with that because Pretty much all of the bugs I have in here, especially the springtails, do keep the mold to a minimum because they'll eat it. So it has stayed really clean. When I open the door, it's not like a gust of putrid air or anything. It actually smells really fresh and naturey. you know? Like when you walk outside after it rains, that's honestly what it smells like. I really like it. I, I don't know, I was a little bit worried about that, but it has not been, I haven't had one single issue with that in the year that I've had this set up. Oh, there's a little springtail right there. You know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to insert a little clip of the springtails because they do move so fast <laughs> and they're so small. Like even if it held perfectly still, it would be hard to get a good clip of them, but you can look them up online if you wanna see them. I don't really actually pay them too much attention because with everything going on in here, that's like, that's the least thing I'm interested in. Back to the isopods, because like I said, they are my favorite. They actually will like burrow. So I'll insert, I'll insert some close-ups of their little burrows that I can see like, especially right here and then down into the log or underneath the log. But they do group up and live in these little burrows, which is kind of fun that there's just like little different clusters that live in different sections of here. There is a burrow they've made right up against the glass. It's actually my favorite burrow because even when they're hiding, I can like still kind of watch them. I think they've actually gone a little bit deeper in right now because I am like right here, probably in their opinion, screaming at them. It is pretty cool to see them active right here. And the millipedes also like to hang out with them. In that original video, I saw a few comments about how the isopods would probably like bully the millipedes and like force them out, how they did the zebra isopods. They don't really seem to bother each other. As I've said a million times, I do spend a lot of time sitting here staring at them and I haven't seen any issues with that. So, 
you know, and if there are a few issues here or there, it's nature, it's gonna happen, um, but it's not something that I feel like I need to separate them about, you know? It's something really funny, this is like so random that I've noticed is people are like, oh, do they eat your plants? They actually haven't really. Uh, with one exception, and the one exception is Ficus villosa right here. They do actually like to chew on this plant especially, and it's not too much of an issue because it is a bit higher than where they typically like to hang out, but every once in a while, you know, I see an isopod up here like munching on a leaf, like right there. Um, and then if a leaf, a few leaves fell off from right here down to the bottom, it was actually really cool. Over like a day span, they ate an entire leaf, but I have begonia, syngonium, philodendron, hoya, you know, a whole bunch of different stuff in here that when a leaf falls, they don't touch, but the ficus, they love. They That's like their ideal leaf out of this whole <laughs> terrarium, which is kind of funny that they have like preference like that, especially because the velosa leaves are so fuzzy and hairy. For some reason, I feel like that would deter them from it, but I don't know, they love it. Oh, you know what? Actually, the only other leaf they really had an interest in, interest in is, okay, Biz, I need you to lay down so I can show the people. Right here, you can see there's like an Anthurium waraquianum leaf bone, it's the veins of the leaves, and that's all that's left. I already touched on it. They have actually eaten all the tissue off the leaf and left the bone, and I think the bone, it's more of a skeleton the leaf skeleton. Oh, it just looks really cool right here. And they like, they still do like to climb around on it, but yeah, they ate all of the actual leaf, like tissue, the innards, the guts, I would say <laughs> off of it. So that's been a really fun process to watch. I really like the way this thing looks. So yeah, those are the only two leaves plants that I've had. The bugs really show interest in eating, which is Kind of cool, kind of weird, and I wonder why. I wish I could ask them why. I guess we'll go ahead and feed them. Uh, kind of walk you through what, like a typical week of caring for them looks like. Go grab the food. Bismarck is just like out, like lounging on me. He's feeling very jealous of the buggies. Don't worry, dude, you're my number one, okay? My number one critter. Okay, let's go get the food. Come on. I do buy special food for them. It does last quite a long time. I've only had to make one order since I set this up. And all of the food I use is from Reptanicals, which is where I got my actual bugs. They don't sponsor me or anything. We've never been in contact. I've purchased everything with my own money, but I have had a really great experience with them, both with the bugs and also the food I give them. So every Sunday, which today is actually Sunday, I feed them. The bulk of their food is this isopod feast, which is just dehydrated. Let's see what's in this. Kale, river shrimp, carrots, peas, squash, seeds, mushrooms, oyster shell, and oak leaves. I just take a little bit out. It says to add one to two tablespoons in a dry area weekly, depending on culture size. Remove any uneaten food after up to 72 hours in human environments to prevent mold. These guys always eat it fast enough that I don't end up with mold on it. That, again, it hasn't been an issue. There's just enough going on in here that they're keeping everything really clean, which is nice. I'm not having to do anything extra. Just throw it in. Here is what it looks like. Obviously you don't necessarily have to buy this, um, but it just has like everything they need. So it's my responsibility to make sure that they're happy, healthy, thriving. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna add this much and put it in a little pile up here uh, in between the two anthurium skeletons. I do like to keep feedings to this area so that I mean, it's like a better viewage. It's a better viewage area for me. So I always feed them right here. I also give them the shredded shrimp, just shredded river shrimp. So I add a little pinch of this on top to our little dining area. <laughs> yeah, just like a pinch. This will kind of spread around so they're not eating like right on top of each other. Probably once a month-ish, uh, just kind of depending. I do just keep a watch on it day to day to make sure 
that there's still some of this available, but actually my pile that I keep back here of it is gone. So I'm gonna add more today. It's perfect timing. <laughs> uh, they must have knew I was filming this video, so they ate it all up, but I do give them a five in one calcium supplement. This is oyster shell, coral, limestone, cuttle bone, and granite. So I add like a little mound of it back here. I do personally like to do little mounds of it instead of like sprinkling most of the foods. Obviously the shrimp I'll sprinkle. There's a little snail right here I'm gonna rescue before he gets too far in and falls up here. Um, I like to do little mounds because it's easier to see for me if, if I need to refill anything. So obviously it's a lot easier for me to tell if all of the food has been eaten when it's in this one area and same for the calcium supplement. So let's zoom you in. Hey, how are you? What's up? There's a little bit of a glare here. Um, I can't really fix it though because I am just using like window light. Well, maybe I can move my, yeah, let me just move my big butt out of the way. But I like to put the calcium supplement here so that, I don't know, again, it kind of just spreads it out and yeah. Yeah, just like a little mound of it right here. And then once it's gone, I can easily tell that I need to refill because I know that that's where I keep that. If there's not a mound of some rock looking stuff there, it needs more. Easy peasy. The last thing I throw, well, the kind of the last thing I throw in here for food is my springtail feast. This is a complete diet for them. Let's see what's in here. This is made of brewer's yeast, spirulina, algae, and mushroom powder. So I just will open this puppy up. When I ordered it, oops, a little piece of bark fell out. When I ordered it, it comes with like this little wooden spoon thing. I just will, you know, take a little scoop about that size and sprinkle it in around where the food is, kind of knock off the extra onto this bark. Cause then I can kind of, um, I like to have it on the bark, the piece of wood in here, because then I can see the springtails kind of crawling around. But yeah, I just sprinkle it down there and they handle business. So yeah, that's all the food I'll put in here weekly. But, um, you know, through the week, whatever we're eating, I'll throw a piece in there for them. So, you know, if I'm chopping up some cucumber, I'll throw in a cucumber, um, blueberries. Oh, wow, they ate the blueberries I put in there two days ago, but there were, I threw in three blueberries and they are just gone. Cucumber, blueberries, carrots, beans, peas, you know, anything like that that we're eating. Toss it in, they eat it up. And that's actually my like favorite food to give them, those little, it's, it's really every few day, every couple days. So probably two, maybe three times a week, I'll throw something in there, depending on if they've eaten what I threw in there uh, a couple days before, you know? If, I, if, if the fresh produce is gone, I'll throw another piece in there when I notice that. So yeah, those are my favorite things to watch them eat though, because it really does like, especially the cucumber. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the Instagram reels of Worcester terrarium or something like that puts a round of cucumber in there and then all the little bugs in his terrariums will gather and you can see them really up close. So yeah, I mean, that really is, like if you love watching those reels and you're interested in those reels, you should definitely consider getting something like this because you can see those in real time for yourself up close and in action. It's really, really fun and I highly recommend it. So I will actually, um, I'm not gonna do it right now, but later tonight when the bugs are a little bit more active, I will get some close up footage of them. Absolutely love watching them. Obviously I love the plants too, but the plants aren't really something I can come, I can like, fully enjoy obsess over every single day because you know they just kind of do their own thing. I do like water them, give them, you know, nutrients and all that stuff, but the bugs, it, there's kind of something going on for me to view constantly, constantly. And it's really fun for me. It really is like probably my favorite hobby in my house, my favorite thing, 
hobby wise to do in my house is to sit here and look at it. I do think everybody could get some enjoyment out of it. So as far as water, I don't give them anything extra. I do just spray some secondary water in there, which secondary water where I live comes straight from the lake. So it's like poopy, fishy, gross algae water. The bugs seem to really like it. Sometimes I'll collect rain for them and sprinkle that in there. That's all that they've really needed. And my bugs are multiplying. They're doing really well. They look really healthy. They're very like vibrantly colored, fast moving. So yeah, I, I mean, as far as I know, I'm not an expert or anything, they're doing well. So yeah, you don't really need to do anything extra except for just, you know, spray your plants as you would anyway. And that's what, that's all they need. So I love them. Th that is my terrarium upkeep and plant slash bug tour. I hope you liked this video. I really enjoy talking about this. So I appreciate you listening. It has been a really fun, like almost daily project for me, kind of something I can always tinker around with, which I really like because I'm not someone that likes to like sit still for too long. A lot of little things going on in here. There's always something to improve in here, you know, um, or feed or water or whatever. Oh, as far as like watering this, I do water it with secondary water, straight lake water, and then I'll also add in a bit of liquid dirt. And I really do just like spray the top section really, really well and let it kind of rain down. Um, and that has done the trick. Everything, you know, clearly at the bottom, everything is growing pretty well. So that, that does the trick. It doesn't really require too much extra F, too much extra, too, too many, it doesn't really require any like specialized care other than the top section where I have to spray it almost daily. Yeah, my one year update on this is I love it. It was 100% worth all the money and time, effort, energy I have spent on it. I love it. Um, the only thing I would change is maybe a wider terrarium maybe a little deeper terrarium so that the light didn't sit as close to the moss as it does right now. But I already had this cabinet. I didn't want to go buy a new one. So it is what it is. I'm pleased. I'm very pleased. I do recommend it. Oh, that is my Ikea cabinet terrarium. Let me know what you think. I am very looking forward to reading through all the comments and hearing your feedback, opinions, insight suggestions. <laughs> I really appreciate them. So that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!